You are watching Turn the Pages, and I am your host, Jordan Rivers. So you all know that this uh, season is all about college, the college edition. So I want to make sure that you and your families are prepared to get your child to college. So I have a very, very special guest, one of my favorite people in the entire world, Ariel Judah, she is definitely a force to be reckoned with and a future engineer. So before we get to Judah, I want you all to take a look at our website. It is www.turn-the-pages.org. And if you have any questions or if you want to see a repeat of any episode from this season or our first season, which was all about the importance of literacy, go straight to our website and check us out for season one, season two. And if you have any questions or you want to see something that we haven't covered, email us at info at turn the pages dot org. So we are back and I think this is very important because this is something that we don't talk about. So Judah, uh, I'll just explain the topic of today of our college edition. What happens when you do not get into the college of your choice? And so um, I want to go into her triumphant story <laughs> and she's actually still going through a process of it. So I won't get into that now. So I'll just start with um, my first question to you. Um, we've talked about healthy relationships with our guidance counselors and how important that is to just have that relationship so that you are definitely prepared by that counselor to be able to go forth and look for colleges, scholarships, etc. So I wanted to know what high school did you attend? Well, I attended Kenwood Academy High School. Yes, such a great <laughs> school because I, I guess, you know, my alma mater. And so I wanted to go into... How did you prepare? What was your relationship like with your um, counselor there? Well, she stayed in our face. So the first day of school, Miss Brown was in our face every day. Like, do this, sign up for scholarships, just keep studying, come to me if you need anything. So she stayed on us. Like, I really didn't have to go to her office much. It was like, I did anyway, but... She was just in our face, like, do this, you gotta do that. I was like, okay, I'll make sure I do it. So, <laughs> in my case, I didn't have to stay, or any people in my advisory didn't have to stay on her more so, but it was her staying on us and making sure we prepared for college admissions and just to get through high school because high school is kind of tough. So, <laughs> it definitely can be. So, what process did uh, Ms. Brown take you through um, just to, you know, was it the co college applications? Like, where did she start and how did it end for you? Um, so, I gotta remember it where, like, she started off with just scholarships and we, um, it was, uh, I forgot the website we started off with first, but we ended up going through a few websites and she, just broke down, like, what scholarships to apply for at first. Don't, don't apply for just one. Just do all of them and see which ones you get. This was freshman year, so. So was, she started you yeah, early at, in freshman early. year, and that is so important because we, we talk about um, a few in all of our episodes that you have to start early. So you started, she started you freshman year, mm -hmm. as well as the other students in the freshman class, correct? Yeah. Okay, so she wanted you to look at the colleges. Yes. And now, did she keep this information, or was this information that you had to kind of have on your own? Um, she kept, I mean, she kept it and just spread it out to everybody. So she, you know, made sure that everybody knew. We spread it out to everybody else and friends and family members, like, hey, go scholarships, do these. So you were the only person that knew. You could have kept it to yourself as well and been stingy with it, but you know, if you were me, I just told everybody to go apply for this <laughs> and that and have fun with it and see what money you get out there. Okay, so you started freshman year, yep. you know, looking at the colleges, looking at the scholarships, seeing how to apply, which would be best for you to apply for. Mm -hmm. So um, did you know, or when did you know in high school what you wanted to be? <laughs> 
uh, I wanted to do nursing since I was little actually. I wanted to do neonatal nursing or pediatrics and it changed about probably sophomore year and I did engineering camp, materials engineering camp at the University of Illinois in Urbana and then the chemical engineering camp and the chemical engineering part was so cool. Then I had a health scare for like a, a couple of years before so I wanted to find something to do that pertained to um, nutrition but I didn't want to be a nutritionist so I wanted to study chemicals and food instead. I'm like well what can we make, what career de deals with this? And it was chemical engineering deals a lot with studying chemicals and food or doing anything you want to do so yeah, I decided to talk my year. Chemical engineering would be the thing for me. Okay, so that's how you narrowed down your decision. Yeah. Now, we started you off, we start off uh, our your freshman year. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Brown had you all get prepared. So, mm -hmm. now, tell me how your senior year went when it comes to preparation for college. And your, now, was Ms. Brown still there your senior year? Yes. Okay, and, and your relationship with her and, you know, did you get scholarships for college? Like, I just, I, I want to know it all. So, um, I did not get much any scholarships um, to find out. I applied for everything, but I did not get it. Uh, there were people who did get a lot of money, and I was like, congratulations. But it depended on the person, really. But um, she definitely continued to tell me to apply for more scholarships that are out there, and I did. Didn't get those, and I was like, what am I not doing? Uh, I applied for the Gates Millennium Scholarship, um, mm -hmm. which is a huge one. Yes. It takes about five months to do. Um, they didn't get that one, but it was a great process. I would encourage everybody to try it out. You might get it. It's wonderful. A lot of essays. If you don't, if you don't like writing, just still do it. You might get it. Um, we had people in the office give out scholarship tips and whatnot. Um, so if you kept doing them, you were more likely to get them. But then again, kind of depending on the person and the scholarships, of course. Okay, but I now. get plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to know, it, it seems to be a tedious project mm -hmm. to, you know, constantly get scholarship information and then not get it or, you know, get rejected for that scholarship. So how did that affect you mentally? Were you, you know, still excited about the process or were you kind of ready to give up and just say you know what I'll deal with student loans I don't care I'll do you know student loans financial aid what so what what happened for you mentally uh, where you kept pursuing scholarships because I think it's really important for people to understand that no matter what it looks like or what's happening at the moment that you just continue to keep moving because you never know what happens so how did you deal with that? I kind of gave up a little bit the senior year, maybe a lot more than I should have. Um, it wasn't just a scholarship problem, it was just the schools not getting in, and I was like, what am I going to do? And uh, Tuskegee was one of the schools I applied to. I got in, actually, at a fair at the McCormick Place, and I just didn't have enough money to attend. And I was okay. like, come on, you know, give me some money. But... At that point, this wasn't working. Then I did Fisk as well, and I got in, but there was still no money. I actually went down to Fisk and found out I could not attend. Kind of heartbreaking, but it happens. And so I just kind of fell apart from there. Like I didn't apply anywhere else. I just gave up. Literally just gave up. So the last place was to apply for the Star Scholarship, and that changed my life significantly. Like and wait, <laughs> repeat that scholarship? The man? Star Scholarship. The Star Scholarship. Okay, so where are we now? Where are you in school when you apply for the Star Scholarship, or what What part of your life? Where are you? Um, so I'm, I just graduated. Well, not, well, yeah, I'm done with um, here at Washington now. Um, I got my associate's degree. Uh, I'll be graduating in the spring of next year, actually, and... I'll be uh, hair washed to a month. Okay. <laughs> so what worked out for you, um, you you didn't, well, you got into the school of your choices, but it yeah. was just a money issue. So you mm -hmm. didn't receive a lot of financial aid, scholarships, grants, any of that. So you began to look at uh, the city colleges of Chicago. Yeah. So, you know, 
I really want to bring this up. It's really important because a lot of times when you have, you know, the city colleges or community colleges and, you know, other states, people kind of frown upon them and they don't want to go there because it's a community college and, you know, it's not like the university that you were looking at. And so I want to talk about how helpful CCC has been to you and in your um, academic career. So you went into Harold Washington. Okay, and so from there, what was like your starting and ending point? So you, you, you got accepted. Did you know about the STAR Scholarship? Actually, I did. I, on the news, my mom just kept telling me, go ahead and do it, just in case. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want to do it. I was like just mad overall, just period. I didn't want to do any more scholarships. So I'm not even getting it. <laughs> like, forget <laughs> it. So what is the STAR Scholarship? And is this something just at Harold Washington, or is this within the entire uh, city colleges of Chicago? So we have seven city colleges, just to put it out there. And um, the STAR Scholarship, you can go any to those, any seven colleges, well, you can go into any of them, and you can get that scholarship. No matter where you go, it could be Daly, it could be Truman, Harewood, it could be Malcolm X, I mean, Olive Harvey. You can go to any of those and you'll get that money. You have to have at least a, I think a 3.0 and a 17 on the ACT to get that scholarship. So they pretty much put out that money for people who didn't do so well on the ACT, like me. <laughs> I got a 19 on the ACT. Okay. I'm not scared to put it out there. I mean, it happens. And you um, said you got a 19, but you're, yeah. and, and let's throw out there that your academic record is just wonderful. You have yeah. always maintained great grades, A's and B's, hands down. And I know this personally because I actually used to be her coach at, at Kenwood. So this is someone that I know um, and can definitely confirm the, the wonderful background and person that she truly is did not get the scholarships that she needed to attend the colleges of her choice. So you had to resort to CCC, which is yeah. not a bad thing at all it's because <laughs> um, they do have a pathway partnership with uh, colleges and universities. And yeah. so, and in a second, we'll get into that partnership that they have. So, so now you've gotten a star scholarship and how many years did you have to do at Harold Washington? So the Star Scholarship covers you for like three years. Mm -hmm. I finished mine in two. <laughs> so I got Early in and out. Uh, I wasn't playing no games. I was like, I'm getting in and out of here. Um, yeah, they cover you for three years. That's books and tuition. So you just have to show up for class, literally. You buy your book bag, get your supplies, and just walk in there and have faith in yourself and show up to class, not sleep. <laughs> people were sleeping in class I'm like you're not going to learn sleeping Oh wow! Um, be on time oh man they would lock the door on you sometimes they would lock the door on you and let you in and be like you know we'll come back tomorrow when you want to get here early on time and you're just going to sit there like you know come on but you know they don't play that so get there whatever, whatever city college you go to just you're getting free education and free books so just be there be alive you might get tired, but keep going. It'll be worth the while and worth the wait just doing it and getting to your favorite university. Yes, and it's college life. So let me ask you, what were your expectations of how easy the classes would be at Harold Washington? I thought it would be really easy. I mean, it's community college, right? <laughs> uh, the, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I've even heard people say from universities that community college classes are harder than the ones that you will take at a university. And a lot of them have said that to me, like, look, these classes are easier compared to the ones I take at DePaul or at the University of Miami or DePaul wow. or Harvard. And I'm like, you in Harvard? Like, I thought the classes there would be hard. They're like, nah, this is hard. I'm like, okay, well, great. It is hard. I can attest to that. It is, it's harder. Um, gotta pay attention talk to your professor about anything you need you need help and study in groups group studying is a powerful thing and people might not want to do it at first but find somebody go to tutoring it's just a lot to handle at first but you will get through it um just study constantly take a break but 
Yeah. Must study. <laughs> Get your work done. <laughs> and for you to say that a class is hard, then it has to be hard because yeah. nothing seemed too hard for you to handle, um, especially, you know, at Kenwood. And it just goes to show you that, you know, high school is definitely a different ball game than college, regardless of it being a university or, you know, it being a community college. And so yeah. I wanted to throw out there um, because people – you know, some people will be in your situation or something mm -hmm. similar. So I wanted to put out some great information. You can definitely go to the City of Chicago College's website, but um, you can look up the partnerships that the City uh, of Chicago Colleges has with the universities and the colleges within the City of Chicago or just in Illinois in general. Um, I, I also want to make sure that you know that if you're going to school at, at a different school, you know you're going to transfer, talk to someone um, in admissions or records office to make sure that those college credits are transferable. So that way, you know, if you don't, uh, if you're taking all these courses and only two credits, you know, transfer over, that's not really going to make you happy. And so we'll talk about that in a minute because when you, when you're starting at UIC, all of your credits didn't transfer over, correct? No, yeah. Okay, so the uh, City Colleges of Chicago Pathway Partnerships with Colleges and Universities. So I was very um, happy to see the list because there are a lot. So from, I'll start with University of Illinois Chicago. That's UIC. That's your school. And so, and I'll go back to the top in alphabetical order. Columbia College Chicago. That's my school. DePaul University. That is also my school. Governor State. Illinois Institute of Technology, Kendall College, Loyola University, National Lewis University, Northeastern Illinois University, Northern Illinois University, Roosevelt University, Robert Morris University, School of the Art Institute, and Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. So a lot of people say SIU, so yeah. that's Carbondale. So you can go to the City Colleges of Chicago, see whatever major you want to be and look at the programs that they have with uh look at the partnerships and the programs that they have through those partnerships with the colleges and universities because it's very important and apply for the is it the star scholarship yes and apply for that star scholarship and you know see what happens because you never know so let's go back to where you are now so, because cause I, I always have to ask you, like, okay, are you in Harold Washington now? When do you start UIC? How does that work? So, the STAR scholarship is for three years. Yes. So, how long does it really take for someone to be done with community college? Like, what's the normal? Is it, are they there normally two or three years? Um, it depends on the person. Like, I didn't have to work. So, I think that was a big thing with me finishing in two years, not having to worry about where somewhere to live or where my income, my mom took care of everything with that. So it depends on the person. I've had people who's finishing three years, they have to work, they have kids, families, you know, or they take care of their own loved ones at home. So it depends. I wouldn't rush it if you don't have to. I don't feel like I rush, but if you can get down and get it done in two years, don't wait. Just go ahead and go through it. Just go. Um, but if you have to take that third year, the money is there for you. you. Don't rush it if you don't have to. Just go and take your time and do good. And do good. Well, that's some great advice. So how did you find out about the partnership with the City Colleges of Chicago and Harold Washington? So if you go to Harold Washington, you're going to meet somebody named Ellen Goldberg. And she is the most wonderful person in Harold Washington. Once again, Ellen Goldberg, she is so wonderful. 11th floor, you will find her. And she told me everything about college and transferring. The best advice ever. Now, um, is she a counselor, college, or an advisor? <laughs> She's a transfer advisor. Okay, yeah, transfer yeah. advisor. Okay, I just want to get that clear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because you won't be staying at Community College forever, right? Right. Why would I go up there and check it out? <laughs> she is, you might, she ran into me, actually. Okay. And I was like, who is this lady? She's so loud and just so <laughs> everywhere. And she's so cool, though. Like, she's cool. And she gives me the best advice. She would give you the best advice. And she told me everything about transferring, um, the partnerships, of course, and who had the best engineering, um, 
um, programs. programs at their schools. And of course, UIC was up there, Loyola. Uh, it was IIT, which is number one on the list, of course. Okay. Um, but anyone you want to go to, I mean, UIC was cheapest, and I love UIC because, I mean, <laughs> it's UIC, right? If you've been on campus, you'll love it. Um, but any, whatever major, liberal arts, whatever, go to the partnerships and um, look at what they're talking about. They might ask for a certain GPA, they might ask that a certain amount of credits done or certain classes. Certain classes you may need, um, like calculus, <laughs> algebra, of course. The smart um, people courses. It's yeah. like calling the calculus, <laughs> uh, count me out. Chemistry. So to make sure that um, whatever that partnership you want to do, um, just make sure you have the classes for it and make sure at least 45 of those credits transfer and those 64 credits that you're going to get to graduate from Harold. Okay, now how many, okay, so you're done with Harold Washington yeah. College and now you're going right into UIC. Are you mm -hmm. on dorm? No. Okay. So UIC is a commuter school. 70% of the people at UIC commit to school. And that's because, I mean, you just got funding from the state, of course. So they have a yeah. lot to deal with it, of course. And it's just more, it's just cheaper, just commuting from home. And we have programs where people can stay on campus over the summer and experience the dorm that way, and they get apartments and whatever. So, yeah, we, we, we're big on commuting. So we all just come near the family, like, hey, I came from this part, this part, and... We hang out, find somewhere to study together, of course. Okay. Now, how long do you have left at UIC? So you've done your two years at mm -hmm. um, the community college, and so and you did it in two and not in three. <laughs> so how how much longer do you have left at UIC? So I have three years. Um, the engineering program at UIC is five years. Wow. Um, I finished my prerequisites, so that's pretty much all two years of, you know, just that. But the next three years will be me doing the actual chemical and the engineering part. And we're all separating that chemical and engineering. So you do the engineering is pretty much that the base. That's the part you want to have, of course. So you go into any engineering discipline you want to do. Engineering is just the best. That's the, that's the part you're going to start off with. Then you get to chemical or materials or whatever you're going to do. And that takes five years to do, believe it or not. Wow. <laughs> and you know what? And here it is. We're doing a college edition, so I'm glad you're, that you're here because I automatically assume that it would be four years. So I'm glad that I asked you that. So <laughs> thank goodness I went to school for creative writing. So that was <laughs> only four years. So, okay, so you're at UIC. Um, what is your take on just your overall process? So I, I feel like, in a sense, you had a rough start mm -hmm. because I was one of those people who got that phone call from you because you were frustrated because yes. you you got into the school that you wanted to, but you couldn't afford it, and so you just kept, kept going. And so that's so important to let people know that regardless of what your situation looks like when it comes to college, mm -hmm. that if you continue to push yourself you will definitely succeed and at you absolutely ran into things that you didn't even know existed mm -hmm. because you you didn't even know to research it so had that not even happened you wouldn't have been able to you know get the star scholarship and mm -hmm. even though you didn't get the scholarships that you applied for you know in the beginning in high school you still received scholarship that was definitely a huge help to you and where you are right now and so I, I definitely want people to listen to your story and take that in because it's important so you cannot give up so education is extremely important and the the better we are educated the more that uh, we can actually do for our communities, our neighbors, our children, and our future. So that is a huge, huge, just keep pushing, keep pushing. So you have you have to do three more years. Yeah. And so what will that consist of? And then I want to go into asking you about internships because we mm -hmm. did speak about internships. So you're doing chemical engineering and mm -hmm. you want to work with food, GMOs, you know, <laughs> you, you want to do a lot. You know, you yeah. are definitely our future scientist, our future engineer. So I just want to go over a couple of those things. I think we have some time. So let's talk about your internship and what your plans are and how you plan to go about getting an internship for what it is that you want to do. So because I'm going into food science with my chemical engineering degree and agricultural science as well, 
Uh, I wanted to look at Dow as an internship um, because they work with two different types of GMOs. So there are two different types of GMOs, by the way. Okay, so what are GMOs? <laughs> what are GMOs? So genet it's gen genetically modified organisms. Okay. Um, so basically the ones we all know about, the pesticides, you know, chickens being injected with all kinds of hormones. That's the bad part. We don't want that. Nobody wants that. Right. <laughs> then you have the part where they just take the seeds. So let's say you have a fruit in Africa and you want it grown here in America, in Illinois specifically. Uh, they'll put it in a hot house or put it in an environment where it will grow in Africa without genetically modifying it, without any pesticides on it, no drugs on it at all. Just it's regular natural state, but in a room where, or a tent, or some house where the environment is the same. It's not changing anything really. It's the same fruit. Um, and I want to work with that part of, gene of GMOs because I don't want to change anything genetically. I just want to figure out how to get those fruits and grow them here without harming anybody who consumes it, without harm harmony harmony harming the um, environment and uh, making it safe for everybody without any changes. I mean, we all want to eat food without changing it, right? Too much gen gen genetically and whatnot, so. Oh my gosh, that's so, <laughs> that is so inspiring. I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, in my in my mind, I'm leaning on the <laughs> desk like this, like, oh my goodness. And so, I mean, it's definitely worth the five years. So, and I know a lot of people will probably, they see it, they're interested in it, they might not, you know, look at it because they're saying, oh, it's, you know, five years, five years is too long. <laughs> so, but I definitely want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to uh, for sharing your story with us. Um, it's definitely important to keep pushing regardless of your circumstances. I know that there have been people who have probably experienced, you know, yeah. even more of a setback than you have. And so I do appreciate you coming in and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate you all. Um, thank Thank you so much all of you viewers who are watching turn the pages you can see me every monday at seven for our college edition i hope you have a beautiful and wonderful day remember www.turn-the-pages.org and i hope to see you monday